Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Change Christian Center. We're so glad that you're here this morning. We're so glad that you take this opportunity this morning to be with us and to uh, we're going to talk about the word of God with you and you with us. And we're going to interact. We're going to have a great time because we are here to encourage one another. Good morning to you all, too. We uh, thank you for being here. We thank you. Uh, we love to say this, and it's not something that we just say just to say it. We truly mean it. We thank you all for your encouragement. We thank you for your texts, your calls, your Facebook, your posts, every single thing that you do to encourage us, uh, to encourage us along. We really appreciate it this morning. And uh, we want you to let you know that we do not take it for granted. And, you know, the Bible tells us that there's a time and a season for everything. And I want to encourage you this morning, regardless of what season you're in, there's a time for it, but there's a time where God is going to do a new thing. And I want you to stay encouraged because God has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about me. He has, has not forgotten about us. He is going to do a new thing. And we're just excited about it. We're excited about the word this morning. As you know, I'm doing the introduction. So that means my beautiful wife will be speaking this morning. And I love when she uh, speaks. Uh, I, I see her walk with God. I see her reading and studying and the things that she says. She lives it out in front of us at home. And so I'm always encouraged to hear her speak. And so we're going to hear from her today. So with that being said, again, I want to say a couple more people has logged on. I want to say good morning to you all as well. Thank you for being here. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning. You are the mighty God in Christ. You are our Savior, God. Lord, you are our trust, our hope. Everything is in you, Lord. And we just thank you for this opportunity that we can come together this morning. Lord, touching and agreeing with the word, oh God, believing that our foundation is firm because it's built up on you and it's built up on your word. We thank you today, God, and we ask you as we move forward today, go before us in all that we say and do that you'll get the honor, the praise, and the glory. And God, we're made of clay. And I know we fail you sometimes. So we ask you if there's any sin in our life, anything we thought, said, or done, anything that's not pleasing to you, forgive us here today. Let your blood cleanse us and make us whole again, oh God. We thank you in advance. We give you all praise for what you're doing. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you this morning. Like I said, we're excited. My wife will be speaking this morning. So with no further delay, I present Miss Hester. Good morning, everybody, and praise the Lord. I'm just excited about what God is doing, um, not only in my life, but in your life, too. Um, I, we're um, connected to social media, most of our friends and our family and those that follow us through the week. We're, we're watching your posts on social media and stuff like that, and we're just thankful to see that you've been encouraging us. Your words of encouragement on social media, wherever you place it on your platform, we're very thankful for that. We're thankful because we know that on the other side, we have other people out there rooting for us and we're rooting for you all too. And we just want to thank you. My husband said it. And like we said, we don't say it like, we're just grateful, very, very grateful for you. And we're thankful for the word of God. Just like my husband said, I'm going to agree with, I feel like that God has given to me. I want to give a backdrop of what I'm going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the, the, the little guy at the pool of Bethesda. You know, hang on one second. There we go. The pool of Bethesda. And, you know, he was sitting there for a very long time. You know, once a year, the angel comes and troubles the water, and he has gotten missed several times. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Jesus was in Samaria before he went on his little journey to come to this guy um, at the pool of Bethesda. He was at, um, talking to the woman. He had to go through Samaria. So he was at the well with the woman at the well, and you know about that story. So let's move a little bit forward. So he gets moving on along, and then we have this, um, what we say, a congressman, we would say, and his son was sick. So he sent his word, and the child was healed. So now we're going to plant ourselves in John 5, John chapter 5, where we're at this pool of Bethesda. I want to read a little bit about it, okay? John 5, 1 through 13. I will not read the whole entire thing, but I just want to give you a backdrop, and we're going to talk about getting up, taking up, and walking. Um, so John 5, 1 through 13. After there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So he had to go somewhere. Now there was in Jerusalem a sheep gate, a pool called Bethesda. There was five roofs and columns. So there's columns around, and there was a roof to it that laid. 
multiple invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One of them were, was an invalid. An invalid means a person who is weak or disabled. He was there for 38 years. Let's go back a little bit. There was a feast, so there was a party going on in the place where there were blind people, lame people, and paralyzed people. And this man was sitting there for 38 years. The angel would come down and trouble the waters. And remember, he's around his friends. They jump past him to get into the water to be healed. Okay, so let's keep going along with that. So he laid there for 38 years. When Jesus um, saw him laying there, he knew that he had been there a long time. He knew that he was there a long time. Sometimes we're in situations that we place ourselves in or we find ourselves in. Jesus knew all about this man. And he knows all about what you're going through. He knew he was there for a very long time. And he said to this God, why are you comfortable in your state? You know, I'm paraphrasing. Why are you comfortable sitting there? How long will you stay sitting there? This, he blamed everybody around him. Hey, look, the waters were troubled. Nobody helped me to get in. I sat here the whole time blaming somebody else who couldn't help me to get into the waters. But you know, when there's a stirring of the water and there's a stirring of the spirit, there's something inside of you that has to move. We can't wait on our neighbor to pick us up. We can't wait on our friends to pick us up. We have to pick ourselves up and get into the presence of the Lord. So Jesus said unto him, do you want to be healed? He said, well, sir, I have no one to put me in the water. He asked him a question. Do you want to be healed? And he asked, answered the question with a question. Sir, there's nobody putting me in the water. Who today wants to be healed? Who today wants to be delivered? God is asking that question today. What do you need from God? Last For the last five weeks, pastors, priests, put on a full armor of God. That we'll be able to stand and, and quench the fiery darts of the enemy. The Lord is asking the same person, place yourself there. You've been lame and you've been sitting here for a very long time. What, what, what do I need to do to get up, walk, and move? He said, sir, nobody help me. I'm telling you today, church, you don't have to wait on anybody to help you get into the water. You don't have to wait till the angels come down to trouble the water. Jesus himself is walking by right now. What do you need from God? What do you need from God? The word of the Lord says to save yourself from this untoward generation. At this point in time, we have to be able to search self first before we can help others. This guy was there for 38 years. The water was starting. Everybody kept passing. But there's always been an excuse. Nobody took me. Nobody showed me. You know what? There's a time in the hour that we're living in as mature saints and Christians and people of God that you know what? We're not going to wait for grandma to say, get up and move. We're not going to wait for dad to get up and say, and move. we're going to get within ourselves and say, you know what? Now it's a time. Now in this present time, I will get up. I will put down the things that are holding me down. I will lay aside every sin and every weight that's so easy to beset me. And I'm going to move forward in the name of Jesus. Can we get an amen? He told him to get up, take up your bed and walk. Get up, take up your bed and walk. First of all, you have to get up out of that situation. Whatever situation it is, get up from it. And, and once he said, you know what? You are healed. He had something had to transpire in him. The man had to be healed first. Is there anything that's in your life right now that God needs to heal? That he needs to go in and operate on so you can get up and walk? Has your past plagued you this long? What does God need to heal in your life that you can get up? Take up and walk. Let him go in and let the potter make you over again. We yeah, are the I mean, potter. Yes. He, we are the clay. He's the potter. Let him put you back on the potter's wheel. Right. Whatever it is that God needs to heal in your life, that you'll be able to get up, walk, and do what he's called you to do. Yes. He, he didn't say get up and get up and stand. He said get up, take up, and walk. Yes. Whatever it is, get up, take up, and walk. Yes. Get up, take up, and walk. Yeah. Once he was healed, yes. he got up from that situation and he was healed. Whatever's broken him or whatever injured him that made him stay there for that amount of time, God said, get up, move quickly and do what I have called you to do. Yeah. Whatever you have in your life that's causing you to be weighed down or broken or that you're causing you to be um, displaced or perplexed or away from God, get up. Take up and walk. Yeah. Lay down every sin in every way. Get up. Take up and walk. 
do what the ministry, do what God has called you to do, the ministry that God has called you to do. Shake yourself. I bind the enemy right now in Jesus' yes, name. Amen. It has caused any of the persons that's watching today to find themselves broken. God is the God that blends. He mends. The potter puts us back together again. God mends us from the inside out. Yes. We're in that city that's set upon a hill that cannot be here. Don't let the enemy trick you or fool you to stay in the state that you're in. Come if on. you're broken, he'll heal you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. So we have these namesayers down in John 5. How is it that you heal on a Sabbath day? Who did they know that they were talking to or talking about? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he can heal any day he wants to heal. Yes. But the problem is, we have people on the outside whispering in our ears, how did God do this for you? And how did God do that for you? You know what? It is a Sabbath day every day. Jesus can do exactly what he wants, when he wants, and to oh, whom he wants to. Yes. And get up, take up, and walk. Get up. Take up and walk. God can do whatever he wants to do on any day and every given point in your life. Yes. But it's up to us not to sit in that spot and depend on other people to put you in the water. We are mature Christians. We are mature people of God. We know that we're able to stand our armors on. We're ready to fight. We're ready to push forward and do what God has called us to do. Now is the appointed time that we should stand up as a church and send out the rod revival. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Blow it loud, church. We are ready to stand and defeat the enemy in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Get up, take up, and you walk. Walk yeah. in the authority and the anointing that God has called in your life. Lay aside whatever, whatever it is that caused you to turn your back on God. Whatever it is that makes you stay up in the middle of the night. Lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Let yeah. God yeah. rise up and your enemies be scattered. God is a good God. He is a merciful God. He is a God is for you. Yeah. He's for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You have a calling on your life. Walk in that calling. Yes. You have a gift that's placed on your life. Walk in the gifts. We're living in an end time church. Look what's going on around us. We're not swaying to the left or the right. We know what's going on. The enemy time is drawing now. He knows his time is running out. The word of God today is to get up, take up, and walk. Yes. Get up quickly, church. Get up out of your sleep and out of your slumber. Shake yourself. Let's not be like the church of Laodicea that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. We are not lazy people. We're not going to live lots of days of hope anymore. If you're lazy today, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake Get it your off. energy back. Get your zeal back. Get your anointing back. Get back into the presence of the Lord that you'll be able to get up, take up. And you'll be able to walk. Church, it's yeah. time. It's time for revival. It's time right now. I solicit you today that if you have a call in your life, if God has placed something in your heart, you need to do it. Yes. We need to just get out and just do it. Do what God has called you to do. Yes. Let no man, Come no on. man, mankind put a mark on you and tell you that you're not able. God has called every single one of us to ministry. In the book of Ephesians, we have a list of apostles, teachers, doctors. We are approved by God. Man doesn't have to put the stamp of approval on you Come because on. you're going to go and stand before God yourself. And he's going to say, what did you do for me? And you can't say, well, Pastor Les didn't tell me I could do this or Nia didn't say I could do that. What did you do for Christ? Only oh, what you yeah. do for Christ will last. Don't stand on the garments of a pastor or of, of, of a first lady. You have an anointing on your life. God has called you in this time. The anointing breaks the yoke. The yeah. word of God is true. And like we said, and every man is a liar. Go forth and do what God has called you to do. In the name of Jesus, get up, take up, and walk. Walk in the authority and anointing that you've been called. Change the atmosphere of the room when you walk in. It's not about you, but the anointing is on your life. Come Let on. the Lord reign from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Let it be a turnaround experience in your life. Yes. Get up, take up, and walk. Yes. Get up. Get a get up spirit about yourself. Take up whatever you need to take up, Come and on. you walk. And you put one foot in front of the other yeah. in rhythm and in cadence with the word of God in your life. In Jesus' name. 
You may have been knocked down, but it's time to get back up. Yes. You may have been wounded in the in the presence of your friends and in the presence of your enemies. Get up. You may have been hurt by family members. Oh. Friends that you thought were friends were very well were enemies. Get up. Yes. Get up. Take up your bed. Let it not be another 38 years or 38 seconds. Get yourself up. Come Walk yes. in the anointing that you were called to do. Yes. Stop blaming everybody else about what's going on in your life and take control of your life and go and work for the Lord. He has called us as apostles and preachers and teachers and evangelists to do the work of the Lord. He has equipped you already. Yes. What is holding you back? What's holding you back? Yes. What's holding you back? Sickness has no dominion over you. The right. word of God said he will heal you from the inside out. Disease yeah. has no dominion over you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that within me. Bless his holy name and forget not all of his benefits who heal all diseases. Who's yeah. out there saying that I can't do anything because my nerves are bad or I get panic attacks or I'm sick or I'm this and I'm that. He heals all diseases. Yeah. He has the benefits every day. Morning by morning, new mercies. Today is a new day of new mercies. Get up, take up, and walk yes. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. No one else is control of your life but you. Yes. We can't blame Pastor Laz. We can't blame Nita for anything. And I'm not saying you're placing blame, but I'm giving you a word from God. Now is the appointed time to, to get up out of your slumber and sleep, church. It's time to shake yourself, to get yourself ready because the king is coming. Let him find you working diligently for him. And now is the time. Now is the time to get yourself ready. Shake off whatever got you down. Shake off whatever hindering you. Do it today, church. Do it today, church. God wants to bless you as yes. you bless others. If you have an enemy, yes. forgive them. God has forgiven us. If you have a family member you can't stand, love them anyhow. Don't lose your blessings because of ignorance, okay? Don't lose your blessings because the enemy come will on. come in like a flood and steal from you. Don't let the enemy take you there anymore. On, Going yeah. into work with a bad attitude, shake it off, church. Shake it off. Going into the grocery store with a bad attitude, shake it off. Yes. You said, I don't care who's watching me, but I do because God is watching. He's all seeing and all knowing. He's not expecting others to be saints and Christians. He is expecting it from us, church, to get up and take up and walk. The yes. reason we cannot greet one another is because we have too much baggage. The reason we cannot get along with others because we have too much baggage. When was the last time you said, cleanse me, Lord, from the inside out? Yes. Take out of me what you don't want, God, and then he'll shine through you. We're wondering why we're sick in our body because we're having these weights this on us. Shake those weights off so you can get up. Take up and walk. Get up. God is stirring the water. You don't have to wait for anybody to put you in. Step on in. Step on in and let him take you to higher heights and deeper depths in him. In yes. the name of Jesus, name I of pray. Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, God. You may not understand what I'm saying this morning, but there's an urgency about the kingdom of God. There's an urgency about winning souls. There is an urgency about your peace. Speak it over your home. He is the prince of peace. Yes. He is the prince of peace. If you're not walking in peace, he said, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. He left himself if he's the prince of peace. Walk in that peace. Walk in the yes. peace and the anointing of God. Walk in the authority of God. Let's call those things not as though they were. Whatever you speak out of your lips, they will come to fruition. Watch what you're saying, church. Watch what you're speaking from those lips. Negative will cause negative attraction. Positive is going to cause positive attraction. Whatever you speak out, it shall be. So if you're speaking negative, expect negative to come to you. If you're speaking positive, expect it to come. If you're speaking nothing, nothing will come. come Speak on. the yeah. blessings of the Lord upon your home, upon your children, upon your job, upon you, upon yourself. Walk in that. Get up. Take up and walk in the authority of the Lord. There's an urgency. Yes. There's an urgency, church. Yes. There's an urgency. My husband would say, 
Um, we got a battle rattle going on. We have our armor ready. We're ready to fight. We're ready to go. Even if we have to stand, we have that armor ready. Oh. We have it on. We're ready. We're ready for the attacks and the wiles of the enemy. Put your armor on. Keep it on. Don't lay it yes. down. Keep it on. Keep, Keep it on. on because the enemy is like a sly old fox. Huh? He tries to roar and come about who seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't have any teeth in his mouth. Look it up. A lion roars because he doesn't have any teeth to bite. Have you been listening to roars? He ain't going to bite you. You have a fight in you. You have the armor of God. So when he comes in and tries to roar, he has no teeth to bite. Come on. Get up. Take up. And walk. Yes. God has it for you. Get up. Take up and walk. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he waited on people for 38 years. And Jesus passed by. And he asked him, do you want to be healed? And he said, sir, no one took me. Don't give Jesus a question with an answer. Yes, Lord, I want to get up. Yeah. Yes, Lord, I want to be yeah. strong in you. Yes, Lord, I want to be an evangelist. Yes, Lord, I want to walk in the truth. Yes, yeah. Lord, I want to be what you call me to be. Yes, Lord, I want to be anointed in your word. Yes, Lord, use me for your glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to step off. But I know that God is struggling those waters. God is stirring up gifts. God is doing a new thing. God, we cancel the assignment of the enemy that will come yes. over your people, God. We cancel taxes of Satan. You are destroyed in the name of Jesus. We will stand with the full armor of God. Lord, touch your people. Let a fresh anointing be upon their lives, Hallelujah. Lord God. Let them walk in the authority that you've called us to be, Lord God. Let us run this race with patience, Lord God. Let us not give up, Lord God. Let us not look to the left or look to the right. Let us continue to look to the hills from which cometh our help and our help is coming from you, Lord. Let us get up, take up, and walk in the anointing that you called us, Lord God, to evangelize our cities, our homes, yes, Lord God. Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I cancel sickness and disease. I cancel panic attacks and migraines today. I cancel season allergies today. I cancel the assignment of the enemy this day, God. And we stand on your word and your promises and they're still yes and amen. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. God, we adore you and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. I yes. want you to get up this week Yes. Take up yes. and you walk. As we continue to walk in the authority of the Lord, we'll be back this Tuesday or Wednesday with the motivational minute. And Sunday, we're going to have a fresh word from God. You get it up, you take up, yes. and you walk in the authority of the Lord. God bless you.